The next type of signal classification we want to examine is what we mean by a simply defined signal and a piecewise defined signal. This is probably one of the uh, simplest definitions in this whole sequence of videos. Almost doesn't warrant a video all by itself, but it's worth stepping through just briefly. So first of all, when we have a continuous time signal x of t that is simply defined, that means we can write it as a single equation for all time. So for example, x of t equals cosine 2 pi 10 t plus 0.1. If I write that down, just inherently, even without saying, we, we assume that that is a signal that is valid from t equals minus infinity to infinity. Similarly, the signal x of t equals e to the minus t. If that's the signal we're working with, unless something is said otherwise, we assume that is valid for all time t. And this just single equation is what we need. In contrast, if we have a piecewise defined signal, in that case, we are now working with a signal which might have different equations for different parts of time. And when we have that, the notation that we use is this bracket right here. And inside that bracket, we'll write multiple equations that are each defined on different time intervals. So in this example right here, I wrote down a piecewise defined signal that has two time segments defined, one for time greater than or equal to zero, one for time less than zero. For times greater than or equal to zero, the signal is equal to t. For time less than zero, it's equal to minus t. So one big clue that you're working with a piecewise defined signal is that you see brackets like this and all these kind of cases over here. And a clue that you're working with a simply defined signal is that you just have a single equation and there are no you know, single curly brackets right that. So fairly simple. This example here too is just for two time periods that are defined, but you can do more than two. You could have three equations right here. Maybe you have an equation that's good for all time greater than 10, for all time between minus 10 and 10, and then for all time less than a negative 10. So how many cases you have here is, is very arbitrary. The idea though is that you've broken up the real line into different equations that are valid over different time segments. So pretty simple stuff.